how to answer a bow tie and cut question so we have a nurse in the ed caring for a 50 year old female patient the patient is brought into the ed by the sun with drowsiness fever diffuse abdominal pain and the patient has not eaten or drank anything in two days mild crackles to bilateral lobes to kept neck regular hypoactive bowel sounds in all four quadrants the skin is warm and dry poor skin turgor the patient is slightly confused upon examination ekg shows sinus tag with peak t waves vitals are temp 102.2 pulse 118 respiration is 26 bp 92 over 70 o2 98 percent on room air blood glucose of 620 so now we're going to complete the diagram by dragging the choices below to specify which condition the patient's most likely experiencing two actions we're going to take to address this condition and two parameters to monitor the patient's progress i'm actually going to pull up the nurse's notes again so we have everything on one screen so the first step to answering a bow tie question is reading scenario figuring out the potential condition that this patient possibly has our first potential condition is congestive heart failure so do we have any signs and symptoms from the nurse's notes that may indicate this patient has CHF. The patient does have mild crackles, which could be from fluid in the lungs. So CHF is a possibility. Next, we have septic shock. So the patient is febrile with a temp of 102.2. The patient's tachycardic and hypotensive. So septic shock could be a possibility. Does this patient have an upper respiratory infection? Once again, the patient is febrile with mild crackles, so this is also a possibility. And finally, does this patient have any signs of diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA? The patient has a fever, diffuse abdominal pain and vomiting. Skin is warm and dry, poor skin trigger. They're also slightly confused. Their EKG shows peak T waves, which is seen in DKA, tachypneic, and a blood glucose of 620. Now that we've assessed the situation, we can conclude that this patient is most likely presenting with diabetic ketoacidosis. The second step is to pick two actions we're going to take to address this patient's condition. First, we have request a prescription for an oral steroid. The steroid would actually be contraindicated since it would raise the blood sugar. Do we need a urinalysis to check for ketone? Of course, because in DKA, there are extra ketones built up in the patient's blood which will eventually spill to the urine. Do we need to administer IV normal saline? Absolutely, because the priority with DKA is fluid repletion. So are we going to restrict their fluids? No, we're not going to do that because remember, we need to replete their fluids. Finally, are we going to request an order for 50% dextrose in water? No, we are absolutely not doing that because the patient's already hyperglycemic and dextrose is sugar. So no, we're not going to give them more sugar. Finally, the third step is to pick two parameters we're going to monitor to track the patient's progress. Do we need to monitor their temperature? What about their serum potassium level? Yes, we're going to monitor this patient's potassium because there's a risk of hyperkalemia in DKA. There's also risk for hypokalemia during DKA treatment. Are we concerned about their bowel sound? What about their serum glucose level? This is a given. Of course, we're going to monitor their blood sugar because they have DKA and during diabetic ketoacidosis treatment, we're going to monitor hourly glucose. And finally, serum sodium level. Are we concerned about their sodium? I